Hey everyone, what's going on? And thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Justin, and today it's episode one of the new series that I mentioned I wanted to start defending, Dubis. Now this series isn't something that's predetermined. I don't have episodes in my mind. I don't have specific things I wanna talk about necessarily. It's more so going to be just an evolving series that if there's something that pops up that I would like to discuss, I'm going to come on here and create a video to defend Kyle Dubis and at least try to understand what he is trying to think about when he makes certain decisions. Now, I know a lot of people that watch these videos, probably the overwhelming majority, are not fans of Kyle Dubas, but I am very open about it. I am a big fan of the moves that he makes, and I do think that if you look at some of the decisions he makes from a little bit of a different lens, maybe see where he's coming from and his perspective, at least we can decide that it's justifiable to a degree. Now, a lot of people just jump on and immediately hate the decisions and say he's got to go and don't really consider any of the other factors that go into these decisions. So the objective of this is just to shed some light on maybe some other things that are going around the scenes that people don't really think about when they see the main decision, but something to consider moving forward. In today's episode, we're focusing on Matt Murray because right now it's still the off season. We haven't seen him in a Leafs uniform yet. So it's still very contentious, the decision to go after Matt Murray as the starting goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, outright, I will say it. I've already made a couple videos about this. I am not of the belief that Matt Murray is going to be this great starter for the Leafs. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Absolutely not. But would I prefer Matt Murray as the starting goalie of the Leafs? Probably not. There are many goalies out there that I would love to have as the starter. Unfortunately, the market this year just wasn't that of, you know, many options, many great options. And I know there were two on the board, mainly Darcy Kemper and Jack Campbell, that people wanted to focus on. And we ultimately went with the Matt Murray decision. So today, I'm just going to be looking at why that decision, why Matt Murray over Jack Campbell or Darcy Kemper, specifically Jack Campbell, uh, because I know a lot of people were really upset with that decision. At the end of the day, in this specific free agency, Kyle Dubas was stuck in a position where he had to make a gamble. And everybody overwhelmingly had wanted Kyle Dubas to sign and bring back Jack Campbell. And I was in that boat because I love Jack Campbell. I love what he brings to the team. I love his attitude, his personality in the room. I think the guys love him. And he played very well at some stretches of last season. But that's also ignoring the very large portion of the season where he just was not a very good goaltender, wasn't much of an option, had some injury problems, wasn't overwhelmingly, you know, outstanding in the playoffs. And prior to last season on the Toronto Maple Leafs has no real track record of being a starting goaltender. And I think all those factors were completely thrown out the window when the negotiation started because Leafs fans just love the guy, love the personality, love what he was able to bring for a couple months. And so immediately the reaction was, let's bring this guy back. We want him on the Leafs. But from Jack Campbell's perspective, after his first season of being a starting goaltender, that means throughout his entire career, after being a highly touted prospect, a high draft pick for many years, he was a starter for the first time and he wanted to cash in on that. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean more money per AAV. It meant more term. And the Leafs were not prepared to give that term because at the end of the day, Jack Campbell is a gamble. It is a shot in the dark, hoping that he can return to his, you know, September, October, November form of last year for the majority of next season, but that is in no way a guarantee. So to lock yourself into five years of that, which, I mean, the Edmonton Oilers definitely got better in their goaltending. It's a definite upgrade over Mike Smith, and I'm glad that Jack Campbell now has an opportunity to play on another competitive team. But for the Leafs, Taking that five-year gamble was just out of the question. And from Kyle Dubas' perspective, you're looking at a gamble between Jack Campbell at five years or Matt Murray at roughly the same money, even though it's a little bit less. But the big distinction is it's only a two-year deal, which means, I mean, at the end of the day, we all know it. If the Leafs don't win a playoff round next year, whether they outplay their opponent or not, significant changes are coming. We're going to be one year out at that point from Matthews and Nylander expiring. It's going to be seven straight years of the Leafs losing in the first round. Big changes are going to come. 
And in that regard, in that instance, would you rather then want to be making big changes, whether that's a retool, a rebuild, trying to get better and trade to, you know, make the team really ultra competitive? Would you rather be locked into four more years of Jack Campbell at a number that just doesn't work at all if Jack Campbell has a down season next year? That way you can't offload his contract. You're stuck with him for four more years. And if you do want to trade him, it's going to cost you assets just like, you know, Kyle Dubas has learned from his experiences in the past. He's had to pay extra to get rid of Nikita Zaitsev's contract. He's had to pay extra to get rid of Patrick Marlowe's contract. He's got a track record of that, and at least he's learning from it. He doesn't want to be in a position where if Jack Campbell were to have a bad year locked into a five-year contract at over $5 million, that he would have to pay to get rid of it because we're having big changes the year after. Whereas... If the Leafs don't make it past the first round next year, if Matt Murray is not a very good goaltender next year, he's only one year away from free agency. That makes it much more palatable for another team to make that trade, and the Leafs don't have to pay extra in that deal. The Leafs got this guy for free, so it's not like you're losing assets in that whole regard. And if you want to keep him just to burn one more year, you got one more year, that's it. And then the year after that, you're on a fresh slate. You can get a new goaltender, whether that's in free agency, through trade. You can make better decisions and manage your team a little bit better. You'll have a better outlook of what the team is going to look like for the next year. And again, you don't have to pay extra to get rid of the player. I actually think Kyle Dubas deserves a ton of respect from Leafs Nation for the pure fact that most GMs, when they feel like their job is in jeopardy, they will do anything and everything to win over just public opinion and public satisfaction. And we see some of the older GMs in this league, again, when they feel like their job's on the line, they will just do the move that they think will satisfy the crowd in the short term and sacrifice the long term of the team. Now, if Kyle Dubas gets fired next year, there's going to be wholesale changes. You don't fire a GM to just to, just to bring in someone that has the exact same philosophy, the exact same thoughts, going to keep the exact same team. That's not the point. So the fact that Kyle Dubas is picking up a player that is giving us long-term success because it's only a two-year deal versus picking up a player that's equal of a gamble, but for a five-year deal, let's say he gets fired, the new GM comes in, they've got a hell of a job in front of them. And you know what? The easy solution in all of this, considering it was roughly the same amount of money, was, you know what? The fans want Jack Campbell. Let's give the fans what they want. Maybe it'll save my job. Let's sign him just for the sake of making people happy and not for the real reasons why I think Matt Murray is better. And that is something that can't be overlooked. I mean, Kyle Dubas took the direction that he wholeheartedly believes is the better route for the organization, for the team, for the long-term success and health of the franchise, for the opportunity to not have to sell more prospects or sell more picks just to get rid of a contract that you signed when the new guy comes in and has to deal with it. And there's still the possibility that Matt Murray works out perfectly, returns to his form from Pittsburgh, and you know he looks like a genius and everybody doesn't think anything bad about Kyle Dubas anyway, and he doesn't get fired, he keeps his job and everything goes well. I mean, that's the that's the optimistic way of looking at it. But at the very least, he didn't go with the easy route of just trying to make people happy. And I really do think that the public needs to at least consider that and be grateful for the fact that we don't have a GM that's willing to sacrifice the team. He's going to get another job if he gets fired. So why would he care about the Leafs? But he does. And that means a lot. At the end of the day, I'll throw the stats on the screen here if I can. The numbers are very similar for Matt Murray and Jack Campbell. The big difference is Matt Murray has over a hundred more games played in the NHL and over almost double the amount of games started in the NHL as Jack Campbell. And he has very similar numbers to boot. Matt Murray has a 277 goals against average and a 911 save percentage. Jack Campbell has a 253 goals against average and a 916 save percentage. Very similar numbers, except for the fact that, again, Matt Murray has twice the amount of games played and played on a worse Ottawa Senators team that obviously 
your numbers are just going to take a hit because you're on a team that plays poorly defensively in front of you and is a bottom dweller. And at least they were in the last couple of years. So pretty much equal gambles, but the public seems to outweigh one over the other for some reason. Now, again, to summarize, I'm not totally convinced that Matt Murray is a starting goaltender in the NHL. I'm not totally convinced that he was the best option out there. I think there were trading options that could have been better. But looking at this specific example of comparing Matt Murray and Jack Campbell, Jack Campbell being the overwhelming public opinion who should be the starting goaltender for the Leafs versus Matt Murray, someone that Kyle Dubas now has his job on the line and, you know, it was a non-option for the Leafs. I don't think that's a fair, you know, metric of comparing the two goalies. I just think that we do need to consider the lens of Kyle Dubas not wanting to give term considering it was a gamble either way. What are your thoughts? I'll have more of these episodes coming up soon. I really do believe in any decisions that you see publicly, we need to consider from all lenses. You're still entitled to believe that Kyle Dubas made the wrong decision here. And in hindsight, he very well might have. Jack Campbell could return to his form from, you know, October, November of last year. Matt Murray could not pan out. At least we have Ilya Samsonov to back him up. I think that's a strong backup goalie for the position. But we'll see. We'll see when the season starts. We'll see how it goes. What's your opinion after considering this? Are you considering the fact that Kyle Dubas, you know, took into consideration the term of the deal, the gamble of the deal either way? Or are you still, Matt Murray is not a good option. It should have been Jack Campbell. Please let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear it. I've got lots more videos coming out soon. So I'd appreciate it if you click like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.